sustainability, energy efficiency and green development. These are fundamental to the modern cities of today and tomorrow. Hi, I'm Shraddha Pandey and in this video, I will be discussing about the role of green building rating systems in city sustainability by analyzing the impact of green building index as a system on the future of green buildings in Malaysia. Let us start by understanding what green buildings are and why rating systems are important. Infrastructure is indispensable to the growth and development of a society and key components of it are buildings. Buildings use energy for lighting, space heating or cooling, ventilation, air conditioning and other electronic and electrical appliances. Collectively, buildings can consume around 40% of the total energy around the world, including energy usage during construction as well as in their operational phase. Efficient energy use and a conducive environment in and around the buildings is critical to city sustainability. So what is a green building? How is a green building or an energy efficient building different from a conventional one? A green building is a building whose construction and lifetime of operation assure the healthiest possible environment while making the most efficient and least disruptive use of land, water, energy and resources. Some of the features that define a green building include climate responsive nature of its architecture, passive techniques for heating, cooling, ventilation and daylighting, use of renewable sources of energy, efficient and environment friendly practices during construction and post occupancy, use of vernacular materials and occupant health, safety and comfort. An efficiently designed green building can save up to 30 to 60 percent energy as compared to that by a conventional building, which is not environment sensitive. Buildings are an important part of that, uh, particularly in, in developing countries where, where they use uh, uh, maybe a third to 40 percent of, of national uh, energy resources and, and a significantly higher percentage of, of, of electricity, uh, over 70 percent in, in the U.S. Yeah. Lighting is, is a major en energy consumer in, uh, in commercial buildings. Another major energy consumer, uh, particularly in, in tropical areas where uh, uh, large numbers of the world's people live, is, is uh, uh, cooling, um, shading for windows, uh, more efficient cooling systems, and, uh, and use of, of uh, what's called natural ventilation at, at times of year when, when outdoor uh, um, conditions uh, um, permit. However, if we hope to align the benefits of green buildings with the sustainability of a city, and optimize energy use by buildings globally, every designer and developer will need to be aware and work towards creating energy efficient buildings. Only then shall the efforts convert into large scale energy saving. And that is where the green building rating systems play a very important role. They can be used as a tool to encourage and enforce the building of green structures. These may be either in form of certifications or mandatory codes. Now we might ask how the, the uh, how, um, countries uh, um, and governments, uh, and nonprofit agencies promote the, the development of, uh, of, of green buildings, and and two big elements of that are, are standards and, uh, and and rating systems. Um, and, uh, rating systems are, have uh, increasingly shown their value in, in, in many countries um, by, uh, by calling attention to uh, the, the, the value of green buildings and giving uh, um, building, uh, building owners, uh, building operators, uh, um, clear, easy to understand um, um, targets uh, for, for the, um, construction features and for operation of, uh, of, of their buildings. Um, they're not perfect. Uh, they tend not to be overly quantitative, and and one can can get a good rating, with maybe in some cases for 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 aspects of the building that don't necessarily save energy, but are important environmentally. Um, but they they um, um, their popularity uh, is uh, uh, is hugely important. This works well at city level, um, where, where and, and larger people can see that, that neighboring buildings are part of this work in in. Uh, in, in one country can, can help uh, the development work, can help uh, make it easier for, for neighboring countries with similar climates to, uh, um, to do the same. 
There are various rating systems developed and being followed in different countries around the world. While designing green buildings, the site, surroundings, climate, resources, and building function all play a crucial role. And thus, every rating system needs to be contextual and unique in its response to the location, climate, and resource availability of the area that it has been designed for. Green Building Index Malaysia, launched in 2009, is a green building rating system developed by Malaysian Institute of Architects and Association of Consulting Engineers Malaysia. It is a comprehensive rating system for evaluating the environmental design and performance of buildings on six main criteria under seven different categories. The GBI is just another tool to actually help to spread awareness throughout the country, which is why we also formed the Malaysia Green Building Confederation, or MGBC, uh, whose role is to actually spread awareness of uh, sustainability throughout the whole country, not just to designers, but to other stakeholder, stakeholder organizations. We work together with MGBC uh, in promoting in other areas apart from accreditation. And we consider that uh, moving towards green is a natural step, natural step for designers to know. Uh, the industry is responding in the right, in the manner it should. So I'm quite hopeful that, you know, like, again, in the last five years, we've gone from zero green buildings to about 600 registered green buildings. So that's an indication of where the market is right now. So I'm quite encouraged with this development. And they see that uh, through GBI, through a green building certification, there's value add to their development, to their projects. Their projects are performing environmentally better than projects which are not GBI certified. That is one. Secondly, they also see the benefits through operational savings. So they use lesser energy, they use lesser water, lesser utilities, they, 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 they produce less uh, waste. GBI boasts to have successfully achieved 100 million square feet of green rated built up area in the past five years in Malaysia. As imperative it is to have a system in place, it is equally vital to comprehend the approach and response of the building developers and designers towards it. To ensure that we achieve our aim of having more sustainable green buildings in the future. GBI takes a holistic approach and covers many aspects that facilitate the design and construction of an environment-friendly building, rating them on a 100-point system. To assess the impact of GBI as a system, the criterion on which the buildings are rated was sorted into two broad categories, short-term impact and long-term impact. The categorization depends on whether the criterion helps keep the building green for its expected lifetime. Long-term impact criterion are mostly part of the physical structure and design of the building itself and their energy benefits can be gained year after year. For example, if skylights are incorporated in the building envelope as a passive design feature to optimize the use of daylight or if advanced energy performance measures and innovative design initiatives are included at the conception and construction phase, their benefits last for a lifetime. However, other measures like worker site amenities or construction waste management are also important. But these are examples of short-term impact criterions as they do not ensure the effective energy efficiency and environmental gain repeatedly in the coming years. GBI has rated around 300 buildings since 2009 in Malaysia. The study was conducted for the existing GBI non-residential new construction code. It was identified that out of a total 100, 57 points account for long-term impact criterion and 43 for short-term impact criterion. In the past years, GBI has certified 112 buildings in the NRNC category under the four classifications. Out of these, almost 50% of the buildings have applied for and received green certification under the rated classification, which requires only 50 points, suggesting that the majority of buildings aim for and receive this basic level of certification. And it may be important to note that these buildings can acquire 84% of their points from the short 
long-term impact criterion. It is evident from the data from GBI that these buildings tend to acquire points from short-term impact criterion more, suggesting that most of the buildings rated green would not be very different from the conventional ones during their lifespan. So the buildings may be called green, but in reality might not have the expected impact on energy use optimization in Malaysian cities. Also identified were the criterions which seem to be most achievable and non-achievable by the buildings. Less than 20% of the rated buildings could achieve few of the major criterion in the long-term impact category. It is interesting to see that these account for almost 25 points in the 100-point system. And the points achieved by more than 80% of the rated buildings have a substantial share of the short-term impact criterion. However, from the examples of platinum, gold, and silver rated buildings, we see that it is possible to achieve better efficiency within the GBI framework. To encourage and enforce that on a larger scale, a few improvisations can be made. Following are suggestions specific to GBI existing NRNC code. Malaysian standard MS1525 is the Malaysian code of practice for energy efficiency and use of renewable energy for non-residential buildings. Compliance to it should be introduced as a prerequisite for a GBI rating. Among the points achieved by buildings, the percentage requirement for long-term criterion should be specified making sure that the buildings achieve a balance of both. Minimum number of long-term criterion points required should be fixed to apply for silver, gold and platinum certification. Few of the identified criterion are vital for human health, comfort and environment protection. Therefore, should be made mandatory to apply for GBI certification. The weightage of long-term impact criterion can be increased. This would reinforce their importance and higher efforts would be put by developers to achieve them. Number of points allotted for innovation criterion should be increased. This will encourage designers to be creative and make proper analysis of the behavior of the designs and specifications. Innovation should be encouraged in design rather than just being limited to technology by equally dividing innovation points among building design features and technology incorporation. Learning the lessons from the examples of environment sensitive buildings in Malaysia and looking at their climate responsive architectural design and solutions can be one of the most effective ways of doing this. These buildings have been built for the Malaysian climate with features like solar buffer effect, solar shading devices, daylighting, terraced gardens, and orientation-driven ventilation, these are few of the celebrated environment-sensitive buildings in Malaysia. Encouraging architects to apply these features under innovative design criterion would promote the use of climate-responsive architecture. These suggestions may help bring about substantial benefits and create more green buildings having higher efficiency through Green Building Index in Malaysia. And GBI can become a guiding tool for buildings in Malaysia to sustain their energy efficient character throughout their lifespan. In the next 50 years, our energy demands globally will be doubled. Hence, energy saving has become the need of the hour. Green building rating systems are the way towards a greener, more comfortable and more efficient future of our built environment. By developing more effective rating systems, we can ensure the quality of our built environment and hence shape a sustainable future for our cities of tomorrow. Our future is our responsibility.